So what is system safety or system safety engineering? Well, as the name suggests, system safety is uh, engineering safety in a systems engineering context. Okay, so it's safety that's deliberately sat within a systems engineering framework. And so that drives uh, everything about how we consider safety. Okay, so like systems engineering in general, uh, it follows systems theory. Um, but I'm not going to talk about systems theory now. That's a that's a huge subject and I'm not actually an expert in it. But I'm going to talk about three practical things that I've observed um, from doing system safety for, you know, 25 years or so. So first of all, we consider the system uh, holistically. So it's not just the technical stuff, it's not just the hardware, it's the software as well, if there's any software in the system. It's the operating environment around the system and what we're doing with it, the, the functions that we're asking it to do or the application that we're putting it to. And we include um, the people who are using it, we include all the data that's being used, all of the documentation, everything. So we are looking at the system as a whole in accordance with systems theory. That's the, that's the first point. The second point is that it is systematic from a process point of view, okay? So we're following a rigorous process whereby maybe we start um, with some sort of high level requirements and we think about in safety terms what could go wrong and we think about all of our safety obligations what we must do uh, and then we decompose that and break down the problem piece by piece systematically down to a component level and then we consider all of the components and then we systematically uh, integrate it all back together. And what I'm kind of indicating is the V model, where we start at the top left hand corner with our requirements. And then from our requirements, we think about, well, how are we gonna demonstrate that we've met those requirements at the end of the process? And then we carry on going down the V, decomposing into more detail, but also thinking about how we're gonna verify and validate that we've done what we needed to do at every stage when we integrate and come back up the other side. So that's the systematic part of the process. And then thirdly, which I've kind of hinted at already, is a big thing about requirements, okay? So in systems engineering, we are talking about complex stuff. It's hard to understand. So it's not a toaster. So, you know, it's not a, a simple uh, commodity item where you just go, well, I want a toaster. And everybody knows what a toaster does or should do and what it shouldn't do. You know, we want it to, we want it to toast bread and other things, uh, but we don't want it to electrocute people. And I would say that, you know, anybody who, who lives in a, in a sort of a society where we have that where we have toasters, you know what a toaster is. You don't need to articulate the requirements of a toaster. But if it's more um, something more complicated, like a, a ship or a, a power station uh, or a, uh, a complex piece of information technology, you, you, you want to develop a big software system to, to do something, then that's very complicated and you need to consider the requirements in a systematic fashion, starting at the top level, thinking about big picture stuff. What's the system and its boundaries? What does it interact with? Uh, what do we want it to do? And then you need to go to a lot of effort to rigorously decompose that and come up with requirements, which you then verify and validate uh, 
at the at the end of the project or preferably before to avoid surprises so that's a big part of systems engineering because we are dealing with complexity and system safety engineering evolved to fit in with systems engineering and uses all of those concepts and all of those uh, powerful levers to help us engineer safety into a system rather than just adding it on at the very end. So I guess that's the fourth big point. We start to think about safety right at the beginning at the top left hand corner of the V not just at the end and then add it on and hope everything will be all right um, because that doesn't usually work uh, and uh, that's a very usually a very expensive and ineffective way to do things so that's another point about system safety engineering we are engineering in the safety early because that is a more cost effective way of doing it but if we want to summarize system safety engineering remember it's systematic in terms of the way we think about the system and all of its parts it's systematic in terms of the process the way we approach the task and break down the tasks rigorously and put them back together and then finally it borrows from systems engineering and systems theory in the way we consider requirements okay those three things and that is system safety engineering.